In this video, we're going to run through question 9 from the 2012 Module 5 Networks exam. This is quite a tricky question because it's not only about minimum completion time, so critical paths, but it also has restrictions placed on who can do what activities. Um, so having a look at it, John, Ken and Lisa must work together to complete the eight activities in a minimum time. The directed network below shows the activities, their completion time in days and the order in which they must be completed. So we've got a graph there and then we've got a number of restrictions. So A and F can only be completed by John, B and C only completed by Ken, D and E only completed by Lisa and then the last two activities G and H can be completed by anyone. So if we look to the next slide, here you can see I've highlighted um, the activities for each person. So John A and F highlighted in yellow, um, Ken B and C highlighted in blue, and then Lisa D and E highlighted in pink. So it just allows you to keep track of who has to do what. Um, one way of actually working through this question is to set up a table like I've got to here below. And so I've got um, J, K and L for John, Ken and Lisa, and we're just going to work our way through and map out how long it takes to do out each activity. So if we start off, activity A is for John. So let's just, and it takes three hours. So let's just put activity A for the first three there. Now, the next activity that John can do is F, but F cannot be completed until C has been completed because it's an immediate predecessor. So all those rules still apply. So let's fill in, activity B can actually be happening at the same time because Ken can be doing that whilst John is completing activity A. So B takes six hours, so if we just plot in the six hours for activity B, that takes us up to there. Now once activity B is finished, we could start activity E, and Lisa has to complete that. But she could get a head start on D, because it can start at hour four as soon as A is finished. So let's start Lisa off at hour four once A is finished, on activity D. So, and it takes seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and D finishes there. Once she has finished D, she can go back and do E, and it takes six, so we'll just continue along with Lisa. Six, so that takes us up to 16 hours so far. Now, if we go back, activity C is to be completed by Ken, and as soon as he's finished activity B, he can go across and start that. So at hour seven, he can start activity C, and it takes four hours. So we'll just plot that in. Once activity C has been finished, F can start, and John can do F. So we go back to John, and at hour 11, he can start F. So, and that takes five hours. So we just plot that one in, it takes us up to 15. Now the last two activities, G and H, can be done by anyone at any time once those predecessors have finished. So activity G can start as soon as C is finished. Um, so it can actually be done by Ken from hour 11. So if we put G in here, G takes 7, 5, 6, Seven. and H can't start until both F and E are finished so H has to start at hour 17 so either John or Lisa can complete that doesn't really matter but it has to take five hours so we've got one two three four and I've run out of room for my last one so five which means in total that takes a total of 21 hours to complete and if we look back at the multiple choice options, that was option D, was 21 hours. So there is a similar question on a, on a practice paper, I think, in the 2013 lot. Um, I have a feeling it was Heffernan. So that's worth having a look at. But this is just one method of doing that. The other way is simply just to work your way through using the boxes like you normally would with a forward scan, but taking into account where you have to stop and wait for that person to complete something else. So this is just one way of doing it. Hope that's helped.